to hate me for this one. Taylor Swift, Simone Biles, and Beyonce. What do all three of these women have to do in common with each other? Uh, Simone Biles, every time she invents a new move, what do they do? They dock her points. Why? Because Simone Biles... by herself. Simone Biles isn't even just simply competing against other black women because if she was, they wouldn't dock her points so those white judges wouldn't be there. It's the fact that Simone has to compete against white women and that's a move that's too hard for them to do. That's why Taylor Swift keeps winning Album of the Year because if they gave Album of the Year to somebody like Beyonce, if they gave Album of the Year to somebody like SZA, fuck if they had given it to Lana Del Rey, that would set a precedent for talent not easily replicable by Taylor Swift and the other artists that they sign into the industry that are nothing but mini Taylor Swift. They don't want talent. I told y'all this three years ago. Let's get into it. When you go through Taylor's discography, there's absolutely no reason she should have more Album of the Year awards than Celine Dion. Because let's compare her only to white artists. She can't outsing Celine Dion. She can't outsing Lana Del Rey. Half of Taylor's music sounds like it's being sung by Selena Gomez. The other half sounds like if J-Lo attempted a cover of the songs, she would succeed. If J-Lo can cover your song successfully, it's the song and you that sucks, babe. So when we get into it, Lana's giving opium, Taylor's giving nicotine out of a flash drive, and most of the fuel is gone. To say that Taylor outperforms Beyonce, to believe that Taylor is the Michael Jackson of this generation, makes me think about when the white men said, we can't just give these kids participation trophies. This is what happens when you allow white women to believe that they are doing something that everybody else has already been doing. They believe that they're better at it. <laughs> Y'all got me agreeing with white men during Black History Month. Taylor proved it herself. She said thank you to the Recording Academy for voting the way that you did, but I know that your vote is a direct reflection of the passion of the fans. Exactly. Taylor Swift is representation for the basic white women that need to know their mediocrity will in fact get them far in life. Not only that, not only that, is the black men that enables them, especially black American men, that enables them to keep doing whatever that it is that they are doing to believe that they are on some level with the black women. Meanwhile, they are not. Because black men are selling them that illusion. Meanwhile, trying to sleep with them and try to procreate through them. And that's just about it. But this man literally has a disdain for himself that is so deep that he's willing to wash it off through this white woman. And because this white woman, they buy into this illusion so much so they are willing to challenge us to that theory to say. Tyler has no talent. Let me see. Taylor. Is it Taylor? Not Tyler. Of course Tyler has talent. Taylor. What is her name? Tyler Swift. I only know one of her songs I used to like. But other than that, there's really nothing. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. No way. No way. I don't know anything else besides um, one song. And I forgot the name. I should Google it. And it's that's not a good thing if you're the Michael Jackson of this generation. Another thing is this. If she is what people say that she is, right, Tyler? Taylor, I mean. Oh my God, her name. I'm sure you get the point, guys, please. Why is she not competing with other white women? Why is she not competing? Like, why is she always also bringing the scores of black women? Like, she's always reaching the scores of black women, but never the scores of other white women. Why is she... Comp she's not black. Why is she competing with black women? Beyonce is who Taylor Swift fans think she is or want her to be. And I'm about to hop in the shower, but I have to say this before I get in. But hear me out, because they're always saying some absurd shit, right? They're always online like, oh my goodness, everybody hates Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift's always getting villainized and brutalized by the public, especially by black people. And it's like, we don't talk about Taylor Swift until you make us talk about Taylor Swift. Like when you say absurd shit, like Taylor Swift is bigger than Michael Jackson. Go to Haiti right now and ask somebody who's Taylor Swift and then ask them who's Michael Jackson and you'll get your answer. But then they'll also make weird correlations between Taylor Swift and comparisons with her versus like any black artist, especially Beyonce. 
And that's partially because some of them are delusional, but a lot of them know that when they start talking about black people, their views are going to go up and they need that paper. So they're going to talk about black people. And the reality is not only do I not think about Taylor Swift because she's really irrelevant to my well-being and my life and what I care about, but I only think about her when people bring her to my For You page and when, you know, they're like, she's a feminist icon because she's not, or like she cares about her fans to such a degree, like nobody ever does that and okay, whatever, I guess. And the only reason Taylor Swift bent her is that funny is because you guys sound hella delusional when talking about her. Like, yeah, sure, the woman who releases tons and tons and tons of carbon in the atmosphere. Yeah, that's the woman that cares about the environment. That's the feminist icon I'm looking for. And it's like, for all the bias and hatred that they want Taylor Swift to have, Beyonce actually goes through that. Because this is the same people talking about how Beyonce used an AI video to show y'all that her hair is this long. Because apparently black people can have long hair. Yes, are we I mean, you guys like Taylor Swift. Oh my god. I keep on butchering her name because I really don't know this woman. Like, I really don't know this woman. And she keeps on making songs for teenagers. There's another thing. She makes songs for children. And this woman is very old. She makes songs like, I'm 23, I'm 18, and Manuel, 21. Like, no, you're not, sis. Like, grow up. Like, you make childlike kids songs like music. <laughs> That's another thing. I mean, Beyonce sings about growing up, growing up, evolving, a mother. She talks about being on the beach, having multiple name, name, name with boyfriends and acting like a school teenager, like never really growing up. Like, grow up, woman. Grow up. And then how can she be like that? She's a white woman. Like, another thing, what bores me with this whole Tyler Swift's conversation, right? And we're not going to talk about some old bones, but oh my god i keep on betraying these people's name S simone biles and beyonce right we're not gonna really talk about those two black women because we know that simone is unaliving these white women to the point that this russian woman had to come up and say you know what no 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 because you 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 can't i mean even they're running they're running when they run they had to make a point system that is your trust because black white people were running forward like like this they were running like this they were not running straight so now black people to win they had to like lynch over to win you get the point so they couldn't like just run straight people will run straight and just run straight they can't do that they can't okay so this is why the system is so pathetic like they don't consider their feet because white people's feet were not reaching the crossing line. That's exactly what it is. So they don't want to really... It wasn't for us. It wasn't for us. Then we started getting involved. And now they are competing with us. They don't really like that. Like, Taylor Swift is competing with Beyonce. Mainly because the fans, her fans, are doing so. Like, they are the ones pushing this thing that, oh, she saved the American economy. Meanwhile, Beyonce has been doing that as well. She's been saving it, this economy, but, oh, well, she's not being talked about. She's been talked about that, you know, oh, well, she's, she's struggling. She's, her husband is cheating on her. Like, literally just outright bashing Beyonce, like, to a point that she even had to be supporting her own cancellation. Like, come on, guys, just cancel me already. So, it's really interesting when you think about this. Taylor Swift, when her fans are that delulu to think that they can even compare her to Michael Jackson, Michael Jackson level, but never can compete with her own woman on her own scale. Yo, Kusiyabi. So, it's, it's really interesting when you think about it, really. Uh... I really hope she grows up. She starts singing about being a woman, you know, in her age and really stops singing like she's 18 and she's a child and, you know, you're not. And she is being with minors as well. There's another thing as well. So I'm I'm really done with Tyler. She isn't really, that's why I don't listen to her because she never grows up and black men are enabling her to do that. They're, they They are also attracted to her. And not just her, like white women are like, they're attracted to the childlike mindset of white women. You can decide if there's some or all. That's up to you. But one thing you should also understand is Tyler, 
Taylor is not on Michael Jackson level and she will never really be. You can be mad all you like. And also the thing about Tyler, Taylor Swift is her ability to weaponize feminism in achieving her dreams or whatever she's trying to reach. And we are going to have a discussion about how even white women utilize their feminism as a weapon of tool to fight white supremacy when it benefits them. So it's really an important discussion that we're going to have. And this woman discusses it in great detail that I thought, you know what, let me just share her input because I found it very interesting. If you find yourself wondering why feminism so often feels like one step forward, two steps back, or it feels like, you know, feminism just isn't enough, that's because a lot of what we consider to be feminism, especially from the perspective of white women, is actually just white supremacy in disguise. As this commenter very aptly put it, it is a false power construct while still being compliant. Feminism was just invented to keep white women supporting the entire hierarchy. Let me show you something. The feminism that we have right now is top-down feminism. The closer you are to the top of the hierarchy, the more that your issues matter and the more chance that you're going to have of getting them resolved. I'm going to tag a video down here where I got this order from because I think this is a really good way for everybody to picture it and uh, the creator has a lot of good points that they made in that video and I want y'all to watch it. The hierarchy essentially goes like this. White men are at the top. Then you have white women. This is very important for white women to understand. You are not below all the men on this hierarchy. You are only below the white men, which means you can perpetuate harm onto everybody below you. Stay with me. And below white women come all the other people of color because this hierarchy is based on your proximity to whiteness. Whiteness is over here up at the top. It's not actually maleness. And that's where a lot of like feminists get it wrong. They think that the biggest offense that we currently are dealing with is the oppression of women. But that's not true. Some women are a lot less oppressed than others. And when you combine a racial element into it, it only compounds things. And so as much as white women want to be excused from their part in the oppression of people of color, they can be. They can be. Because women's oppression has always existed everywhere. But once we brought whiteness and racism into the equation, you have to understand that's where everything changed. It's really your skin color that matters in this hierarchy. Because then, underneath all of the people of color, then you'll find black men. And then at the very bottom, you'll find black women. Let me break that down for you why this doesn't work. And this is sort of how we've treated feminism as well, right? If white women take down white men, or like they somehow get the same amount of rights as white men, then it'll be fine for everybody else because women's issues are what matters here. That's what we're fighting for, right? Feminism. And I think that's where it all goes off the rails. Because feminism is not more important than anti-blackness. And... Feminism is actually something that's been used to keep this structure very much in place. Not only is this a hierarchy of status, it's also a hierarchy of perspective. You'll see that the perspective narrows towards the top. What happens is white women say, let me escalate this issue to the top and give the men some more perspective so that they can create some room up here for us. The issue becomes escalated up to the top and a little bit more space is created for women up at the top, right? And perhaps due to this, you know, some of this also, you know, trickles down and solves like a couple of issues for POC black men and black women, right? It trickles down a little bit. But for the most part, all that you've done as a white woman by escalating your issues up to white men is you have made things better for yourself. And you will see that there are margins on either side of this. These decisions made by most white women are still going to marginalize some white women because there are women out here on the margins because they are non-conforming or because they are disabled, etc. right? Like you as women going to white men and asking for your rights back, which are inherent human rights, only reinforces the fact that it's white men's place to hand out these rights to whomever they please. And this reinforces the structure. This is all that feminism is. This is why Roe v. Wade is being rolled back because the women are starting to get all too much in the white men's space and the white men don't like that. So they're gonna de-escalate the situation the best way they know how by pressing down and oppressing everybody beneath them so that they can stay up here at the top. And every time we go to them and ask for our rights back, we reinforce the structure. It's like, oh, just vote for whoever's the guy that's gonna do this and like do the least harm to women. That's, that's what keeps the structure structuring, okay? That's what keeps it in place. You need to understand that as a white woman, since you don't face the amount of oppression that the people below you face, you also have less perspective. Just like you feel like white men don't really have a whole lot of perspective when it comes to being a woman, 
you need to understand that as a white woman, you don't have the perspective of a POC or a black man or a black woman. The best you can do is just trickle down what you know and what matters to you to the people down here. The bulk of their marginalization lies out here. Okay, they're not worried about the same things that you're worried about. This hierarchy is also a representation of not only privilege, perspective, and power, this is also the hierarchy of invisible labor. And who does the most of it is down here. The people that do the most invisible labor and have the most invisible injustices heaped upon them are down here. And these are injustices that you know nothing about as a white woman. Whatever you're fighting for and escalating up to the top is only doing these people a marginal amount of good. The greatest trick that the devil ever pulled on women was convincing them that this is an effective structure, that this trickle up and trickle down way of doing things is in any way effective. This is why our politics are ineffective. This is why it's always one step forward, two steps back, because the control stays here. If you want something to cover all the bases, you have to start upstream, as far upstream as you can. If we actually wanted to have a system that takes care of everybody, we would flip it upside down because the most oppressed people have the most perspective. So their perspective would cover and take care of everybody. This is abundance. This is what we call abundance, okay? This is scarcity. This is a scarcity mindset. This is an abundance mindset. If we truly don't wanna have marginalized people, then we have to have really wide margins. Because what I see a lot of white women feminists doing, especially in my comments, since I've started making these types of videos, is they try to create false equivalencies, right? They'll speak from up here, and they'll say, oh, but I don't have privilege because I'm disabled. You're disabled and white. Imagine being disabled and black. Oh, I don't have privilege because I'm a single mother. Imagine being a single mother and black. So you would have racism and sexism and prejudice being compounded three times over than a white woman who's a single mother. We have a lot of sympathy and pity for white women who are single mothers compared to black women who are single mothers. And I know that's not saying much, white women who are single mothers, imagine even more blame being placed on you because of the color of your skin. You can't, that's why when you say, oh, I'm not privileged, you're lying. You're lying and you're being really selfish and you're not considering the people that are out here on margins that you could have never even imagined. Now, if we would just listen to black women and abolish all of the power structures, then nobody would have to worry about being looked down on for being a single mother. The liberation of black women requires the deconstruction of all of those prejudiced views that would help everybody, okay? Not just some people, the way that this structure does. This is why feminism is just, it's fake. It's fake politics, it's fake news. If you really wanna talk about abolishing the power structure and giving everybody equal power, this is the only way to do it. This, you're wasting your time. You're wasting your time. You're gonna be escalating your issues to your oppressor who can always choose to press back down on you and everybody else that's below you. And you haven't helped anybody, not even yourself, because your rights will always be in jeopardy. This will always be a precarious place for you to exist as a white woman. Instead, if we were all able to be liberated from the furthest margins of our society, right? Out here are disabled black women. Out on the very margins of our society are disabled black women. Black women who are in jail, awaiting their trials for reasons that white women can't even dream of, like lying about your address to send your child to a better school. There's a black woman who's been to prison for that. That is actually insane, because I know so many white people who have lied about anything and everything under the sun, including taxes, including everything, and not been punished for it as badly as this black mother was punished just for wanting a better life for her child. And this is her trying to operate within the system, right? But it's the easiest, she's the easiest for the system to oppress because everybody else's liberation is conditional. It's conditional on other people's suffering. When it comes to white women fighting for women's rights, those rights are predicated on other people still suffering. It doesn't work. That's why the structure keeps growing back like a weed because you're not pulling up the weed with the root. You're like trimming the weed and being like, man, why does it keep growing back? Because you're allowing it to feed on all of these people and grow back every time. The only way to stop the weed from growing is to flip this upside down. And you will see how this creates an equal distribution of power, perspective, everything. And this never ever will. When you go from the top down and you claim that everything is gonna trickle down, that's because you don't know what's going on down here. And if you knew, then you would actually be safer. As a marginalized white woman, all of your problems on the margin would be taken care of by a system like this. Because if black disabled women could structure the world the way that they would wanna structure it, there would be enough perspective for everybody to do whatever they wanna do. But because we have this merit-based climb to the top all over each other kind of system, the only way you get to the top of this, by being beautiful, able-bodied, rich, you know, there's, there's all of these conditions that are really outside of your control. And it's basically just like a lottery. Whereas this would be a sure thing. This is really just white supremacy. Feminism, as we know it, is just white supremacy light. 
is just patriarchy light. And until every last one of us advocates for every last one of us, it like in this structure. Again, I'm not talking about white women. You need to learn about, you need to get in black women's business and like, no. I mean, actually listening to black women. I mean, actually applying what would work for them to everybody else, because that is the best system. That is the only way to dismantle the power structure because it gives power to everybody. Adherence to this system will only ever lead us to failure. Because this is the same system that Susan B. Anthony used to win voting rights for women while being extremely anti-black. This is the system. She didn't use this system because we would all be living in the year 5000 right now. Because this is what harms black women. This is what harms black men. This is what harms people of color. This is what harms even you, white women. This is, it, it, it even harms you because those of you that are on the marginalized sides of this who are disabled or don't have pretty privilege or whatever, don't have money, it harms you too. Because when you appeal to white men for your rights, you've already lost. They're only going to give you just enough to serve them. And whenever it is convenient for them, they're going to press down on this and everybody's going to go right back to their place. They're going to start all over. I remind you, Roe v. Wade is off the table in our country now. Everything that these women fought for is because they were only fighting for themselves. And so that's where selfishness will get you. This is the only place that selfishness will get you. And at the end of the day, what you really need to understand as a white woman is that this system functions based on proximity and proximity isn't real power. Proximity to power is false power. So when you use your proximity to the top of the hierarchy to win rights just for yourself, you haven't won. You've actually lost. You have reinforced the very thing that you claim to want to dismantle. Worse than that, when you are confronted about this by black women, you say, well, aren't I woman too? Aren't we all women? And it's like, no, because you use your proximity to white men in order to enact any type of change. If you were really serious, you would use your proximity as a woman to black women and you would care about their issues. But you don't get to play the woman card when you use your proximity to whiteness and maleness to solve your own problems and nobody else's. This is a useless, useless system. And this harms black people so much. This harms people of color so much because it makes white people like the deciders, right? It's white women appealing to white men to win a lot of rights for themselves and a little bit of rights for everybody else. And all these people are supposed to be thankful. That's crazy. But for those of you willing to be brave and to stay and to listen, I want to finish this video with an excerpt from How to Be an Anti-Racist by Ibram X. Kendi. This is from a chapter called Failure, which is what we're doing right now, y'all. That's what we're doing right now. To understand why racism lives is to understand the history of anti-racist failure. Why people have failed to create anti-racist societies. To understand the racial history of failure is to understand failed solutions and strategies. To understand failed solutions and strategies is to understand their cradles, failed racial ideologies. Incorrect conceptions of race as a social construct, as opposed to a power construct, of racial history as a singular march of racial progress, as opposed to a duel of anti-racist and racist progress, of the race problem as rooted in ignorance and hate, as opposed to powerful self-interest, all come together to produce solutions bound to fail. Terms and sayings like, I'm not racist, and race neutral, and post racial, and colorblind, and only one race, the human race, and only racists speak about race, and black people can't be racist, and white people are evil, are bound to fail in identifying and eliminating racist power and policy. Stratagems flouting intersectionality are bound to fail the most degraded racial groups. Healing symptoms instead of changing policies is bound to fail in healing society. Challenging the conjoined twins separately is bound to fail to address economic racial inequity. Gentrifying integration is bound to fail non white cultures. All of these ideas are bound to fail because they have consistently failed in the past, but for some reason, their failure doesn't seem to matter. They remain the most popular conceptions and strategies and solutions to combat racism because they stem from the most popular racial ideologies. So as long as white women keep doing this whole, like, we're all women, we're all women, men are the real enemy kind of thing, we're not going to get absolutely fucking anywhere, anywhere. So you need to stop. You need to stop. Yes, we are all women. And that to you as a white woman should mean something else than what it currently means right now. It should mean that you are willing to listen to black women. It should mean that you're willing to listen about where racism plays out in your life because our systems are built upon it. Again, y'all will rah rah so loud when I talk about the invisible labor of women. Oh, the invisible labor of women, the raising children and birthing children and doing the house, doing all that. How about the black women that had to go, both go to work and raise children? their entire history. Not only what you experienced, but then some, then some, and then some. We're all women, aren't we? How come you only care about yourself? You don't care about other women. That's fucking concerning because it would mean admitting something a little less than flattering about yourself. Fucking get over yourself. Jesus Christ. Do you want liberation for everybody or not? Or are you really just okay with this exchange going back and forth for hundreds and hundreds of years? More, more. These repetitive failures exact a toll. Racial history does not repeat harmlessly. Instead, its devastation multiplies.
multiplies when generation after generation repeats the same failed strategies and solutions and ideologies, rather than burying past failures in the caskets of past generations. We've been doing the same damn thing, white women, since Susan B. Anthony. Since Susan B. Anthony, it's been the same shit over and over again. We talk about abortion without talking about how that affects black women. We talk about a right to work and we don't talk about how black women have always had to work. And we never talk about how black women are demonized for wanting to raise their children as a stay-at-home mom. But it's okay to be a stay-at-home mom if you're white and if your husband brings home a salary. But it's not okay to be a stay-at-home mom if you're black and you're using SNAP benefits. But for some reason, it is okay to do that if you're a white single mom because everybody needs a little bit of help. You're not automatically considered lazy or a freeloader if you're a white mom living off of EBT or SNAP benefits because everybody needs a little bit of help. That's where these failed ideologies get you time and time again. Unless you've advocated for the most marginalized person, you've done absolutely nothing. And the cycle is just going to keep repeating itself. And again, if you don't like this, you can fucking leave. To the rest of you, I have some faith that we can turn this around. Don't think you're going to stop hearing me talk about this. I love you all so much. Godspeed. Mm -hmm.